Born in India to an aristocratic Afghan family in 1924, Idris Shah came to be a world-renowned author and teacher of the Sufi tradition. He dedicated his life to adapting essential aspects of Sufism and Islam to the West with only one thing in mind, the development of human potential. Here are essential quotes from his book, Learning How to Learn. The heart stands in Sufi parlance for the higher perceptive faculties of humankind. The negative attitude is to look at the imitators. The positive one, surely, is to remember the words of Jalaluddin Rumi, who said that false gold only exists because there is such a thing as the real. If you get obsessed by the early stages of something, imagining it to be the whole, you will not go further. Knowledge of yourself may involve, if we are learning at the present time, a knowledge of the way of thinking of your society, and to realize that you are probably its product. The first self about which to attain knowledge is the secondary, essentially false, self which stands in the way, however useful it may be for many daily transactions. It must be set aside, made something which can be used or not used, not something which uses you. People crave things, you say. And you are right. But if the thing which they crave in this case, Sufi knowledge, is qualitative and not quantitative, an adjustment to quality must take place before learning can take place. It is not a question of where you go or whether you join a group. It is a question of whether you have been correctly prepared to learn how to learn. People ask, how can knowledge be as good as behavior and belief? The Sufi answer is that without knowledge, there is no certainty that behavior is right and no guarantee that belief is real. Once you know the end, you can devise the means. The end does not justify the means. It provides it. Inner knowledge, perception, is the real form of knowledge. The one is like knowing about honey by studying it. The other, to know it by taste. One is knowing. The other is only knowing about knowing. Unless the psychology is correctly oriented, there is no spirituality, though there can be obsession and emotionality, often mistaken for it. There is no wisdom where there is no common sense. They say seek wisdom while you have the strength, or you may lose the strength without gaining wisdom. The inability to feel when attention is extended and also to encourage or to prevent its being called forth makes man almost uniquely vulnerable to being influenced, especially in having ideas implanted in his brain and being indoctrinated. Attention upon oneself or upon a teacher, without the exercise of securing what is being offered from beyond the immediate surroundings, is a sort of short circuit. As Rumi said, Do not look at me, but take what is in my hand. Study the assumptions behind your actions, 
Then study the assumptions behind your assumptions. You have come a long way, and you do not know it. You have a long way to go, and you do know what that means. If your desire for good is based on greed, it is not good, but greed. Do not try to be humble. Learn humility. To copy a virtue in another is more copying than it is virtue. Try to learn what that virtue is based upon. If you cannot laugh frequently and genuinely, you have no soul. When a belief becomes more than an instrument, you are lost. You remain lost until you learn what belief is really for. Behind the supposed I, which is impermanent, lies the real one which is characterized by the awareness of truth, of reality. People argue about whether knowledge or action should come first, but they are the same. Worthwhile action is in fact knowledge in operation. Right action stems from right knowledge. Premature independence is the daughter of conceit. People have sanctified greed so long as it is the kind of greed prized by the society. All other kinds of greed are labeled bad, but acceptable greed is labeled good motivation only too often. Prayer is worthless without sincerity and true aspiration. The evil of another person can be averted. There is no escape from one's own. One of the great Sufis said, A saint is a saint unless he knows that he is one. When this habit of assuming that instantly perceptible things are more important than more subtle ones goes, the latter become perceptible. Sufi study is devoted to this task. It is for this reason that the great Sheikh Abdul Karim Jili says, Truth, reality, al-haq, is felt, perceived. The world is inferred. Makalun. The Sufi is one who does not care when something is taken from him, but who does not cease to seek for what he has not. The automatism of man is overcome, in the words of Thunan, by aiming for being as you were where you were before you were. Real generosity is anonymous to the extent that a man should be prepared even to be considered ungenerous rather than explain it to others. Not to be greedy is, paradoxically, the highest form of looking after one's true interests. In the first chapter of his Golastan, the Rose Garden, Sadi declares, How can anyone make a good sword from bad iron? From teaching, the useless one will not become useful. The rain, whose nature does not change, grows flowers in the garden, thorns in the marsh. In too many cases, people should be giving thanks for their confusions, which are shields, 
rather than trying to remove them before they are able to face what lies behind. A sign is enough for the alert, but a thousand counsels are not enough for the negligent. If you want to learn Sufism, you must follow the Sufi path. If you want information about why you should follow the Sufi path, you must apply to someone who is not teaching, but who is giving out scholarly opinions about the relative merits of various paths. I can sell you information, or sacks of coal, but neither I nor anyone else can sell knowledge. A characteristic disease of human thought is to mistake the vehicle and the objective, or the instrument and the aim. The nightingale which cannot bear the thorn, it is best that it should never speak of the rose. Truth has no form. The means through which people may perceive truth have forms. All forms are limited. Some of the limitations are time, place, culture, language. Seek the meaning from the outward like a man. Do not be like an ass, content with noise. The value of spiritual exercises is to be of value to whom they can. The human interest should be to provide the right basis for the exercise, not to seek the exercise itself. That which attracts you or others about us may be that which is laid down by us as a tool which enables us to regard you or others as unsuitable. Nobody can stand between you and knowledge if you are fit for it. Anybody or anything may stand between you and knowledge if you are unfit for it. Systematic study or behavior is valuable when it is of use. When it is not, it can be poisonous. Most people's impartiality is not such at all, but a cover for a partial point of view. If you have a basis towards impartiality, your goal must be the control of bias, not the struggle towards impartiality, because you will never reach impartiality through bias. A student should not think that he can understand just because he wants to. One of the basic Sufi needs is to enable people to see themselves as they really are, and to clear away imaginings about what they are or what they think they are doing. What the eyes see is knowledge. What the heart knows is certainty. The real scholars have a sense of humor, which the shallow ones haven't. It will seem improbable, yet, it is no exaggeration to say that people ignore, are unaware of, or even sneer at materials which could be their only hope of escaping from circular thinking. I have learned more from people, things, and ideas which are by many considered irrelevant, slight, or even worthless than from much more advertised and crudely emphasized materials. People look for new teachings or the revelation of concealed ancient ones when their problem rightly may be that they cannot see the presence of the teaching in the materials abundantly available to them, ancient and otherwise.
Sufism is traditionally termed truth without form. One of the most embarrassing pieces of knowledge to have is to know when someone is doing something for his own entertainment, but is convinced that he is doing something for someone else. Greed is the cause of loss and of the inability to profit from apparent gain.